session. Maybe you can tell us how Microsoft Build has been for you. Yeah, yeah it's been interesting. So I'm not a speaker, but most of my teammates are speakers. So it's quite interesting watching the different things that are being released. Of course, some of the things I already was working on and then just seeing some which are completely new and you had no idea they're happening. So it's quite interesting. If like uh, you want to explore more, you can still sign up the sessions going tonight. And uh, there was a session just uh, before this at seven on AI and they're doing a demo of the different parts in AI you can take. So they did a demo of auto-generating text, a demo on PyTorch, a demo on DALE, a demo, a demo on OpenAI. It was quite interesting. So that's something I'll probably uh, want everyone to check out afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So who is Bethany? Who, who are we going to be to, to ah. the session? Tonight. So, mm -hmm. who am I? I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft for AI and machine learning, and also I am, but currently not really. Um, can I say it? I'm a freelance designer, but currently I'm not uh, designing because <laughs> of uh, my role at Microsoft, it's taking a bit of time. So I want, I'm still new to the role, I'm still adjusting. So I'm learning more on AI rather than uh, building and design, but probably in the next few months, I'll be back to freelancing. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned it be back to freelancing. Will they be taking in interns? <laughs> or it's purely you by yourself? I will. I will. I, I definitely. It's a lot of work because you have to, like freelancing, you have to work on like the business side, you have to work on the designs, and you also have to work on everything else in between. So collecting money, negotiating and such stuff. So it's yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay, so if you're looking for interns, please do tell us that can apply as well. Yeah, I see we have an audience, so at the session. Okay, so I'll have my video off uh, through the session, but probably whenever like this need be, I'll switch it back on. Uh, let me just go ahead and share my presentation. Mm, one second. Oh. OK. OK, I hope you can be able to see my screen. So today's session is uh, an introductory session. I'll be doing part one and then on Friday we'll have part two being done by Michael. So my session will be on building wireframes and low fidelity prototypes, part one. So it will just be an introduction, what, what, what are wireframes, what are prototypes, how do you go about it? And then I'll also touch a bit on different things. So before I dive into what I'll be covering. Maybe I could uh, start the recording. Oh, it's already started, so I can just continue. Okay, so as I said, I'm Bethany. I'm a cloud advocate currently at Microsoft. I'm also a freelance designer, but currently not doing any gigs. I'm on break as I focus more on my role and stuff. And then lastly, in case you want to look for me on the internet, you can find me everywhere using at Bethany Jeb. So on LinkedIn, Twitter, I think, uh, which other site is there that I use? I think those are the main ones, but also Behance and uh, Dribble, you can also find me 
Bethany Jeff or Bethany, Bethany Jeff Chumba. So today we'll be covering a bit on problem and goal statements, a bit on storyboarding, uh, differences between low fidelity, high fidelity design. We may probably get our hands dirty with Figma. We'll also do a bit on the principle of information architecture. So what exactly is information architecture? different examples and then what are the eight principles that you need to know when you're building your information architecture and you need just uh, delivering your content on the internet on the different digital interfaces and then the last thing we'll talk about is of course the ethics in design we'll talk a bit about implicit bias and then the different deceptive patterns in design or as most people like to refer them to as dark patterns. So we'll cover all this in our session. First, uh, the first thing is the problem statement. And the problem statement refers to what exactly your design is solving. So if you're creating an app, if you're creating a website, so what exactly do you aim to solve with the app you created? So a problem statement will just is just one sentence. It gives a brief overview of what exactly you're designing. And the sentence is divided like this. So they, like the user, need your application because of this, this. So who are they? Who, who is the one using your application? So that's they. So you write down, is it a is, uh, is the person a farmer, is the person a teacher, and then they need to do what? So what do teachers need to do? Probably they need to teach well because of this and this. So that's what you're solving. So probably there's also the te uh, teachers need to learn how to teach online, probably because most of the classes are now moving to hybrid. So that's also something you can cover. So an example of this is, for example, as a business person or a business lady, a businessman, I need to sell my product online. So who the businessman, what does he need to do? He needs to sell his product online. So why is that? It's because that's where probably their customers are. So an insight is um, an insight or a fact that is where my customers are is uh, something you gained from research so if you went to the field and researched and found out okay probably uh, most of my customers need to uh, find my products online or they purchase the different things i sell online so probably that's a fact that's what you found out so like 90 percent of my uh, users of my customers buy my products online so that's a fact. So the first and the second part may be assumptions or something of that sort, but the last part must be a fact. So maybe I can ask everyone to fill in the gaps. So the application that you want to build or in any application, do you have any idea of a um, problem statement? So who needs what to do what and why do they need that? So maybe I'll just look in the chat. Also, if you have the answer, you can just raise your hand. So anyone who can uh, help form a problem statement? Hmm, no one. Okay, Rose, you can go ahead. Oh, thank you, Bethany. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. I think I'll give it a try. I'm not so sure if mine will make sense. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, the, the application needs to help farmers identify modern farming practice, practices for them to improve their harvest. Yeah, thank you. So you've said uh, the application, so the application is targeted to farmers and they need to know about modern farming practices, right? Yes. So they need this is? Uh, they need to know the different modern practices. This will help them to improve their harvest. 
to improve the harvest. So let's let's uh, try and see if we can fit it in this framework. So farmers need to learn modern farming practices to because they 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 need to improve their habits. So why will they need to improve their habits? Their I mean their harvest. So that's now like the because. So why why will they need to improve their harvest? So we can look at it this way. Um, farmers, of course, their role is uh, to grow crops and sell to the market. And when they sell, they gain profits. So probably you can say farmers need to learn modern farming practices to improve their harvest because they need higher profits or something of that sort. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, and thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you also. Uh, so unless anyone else has, yes, uh, Paminas, you can go ahead. Good evening, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Yeah, I'd like to try. Yeah. But, uh, as a bank customer, I need to easily check my balance because I'd like to plan a budget. Yeah, that's actually great. So who are you? You're a bank customer. What do you need to do? You need to check your balance and why do you need it to plan your budget? Yeah, that's yeah. That's good. That's actually very nice. OK, uh, and then I think this will be the last one, Joseph. Oh, Joseph and Becca. So Joseph, you can start and then Becca. Hi, so again, I'm trying also. So as a non-profit, um, we need to redesign our home page um, because we want to align um, our goals <laughs> and connect to more donors. So, uh, so you want to connect to more donors. Why do you yeah. want to connect to more donors? Um, to get more charities and to assist um, children um, get better education and basic needs. And to get. I'm writing it down so that I can see how it fits. It fits uh, education. Um, so as a non-profit, we need to connect to more donors because we need to increase. Let's say you can say you need to increase to assist uh, 50 more children to get better education. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. So that the goal will be something like, yes, we can redesign our homepage. OK, and then I think we'll go to the last person, um, Becca. Hi, Bethany. Hi. Um, so um, just using the first example that I'm not sure the lady gave um, in terms of farmers, could it um, also be like farmers need to improve their farming practices because the country needs uh, to improve on food security? Would that be a problem statement? So why does the country need to improve on food security? Let's start with that. And why will the farmers be concerned about that? Yes, those I think they're opposite, but yeah. Okay, so you can think of it like this. Um, mm -hmm. Farmers need to improve farming practices. Uh, mm -hmm. because probably there's a scarcity in food in the country, something of that sort. So they mm -hmm. need to improve farming practices, which will gain greater yield because okay. there's a food scarcity in the country. That that now will directly influence them because that's a need. So when you say food security, it's a bit, mm. yes, we know most people need to have food and most people need to have the at the back of their mind that they'll get food the next day. But then why should the farmers be concerned about that? Because probably currently there's food scarcity. And okay. does that make sense? Uh, what, um, 
what if it's an initiative by the government and you're looking at solutions for farmers to that work? A second. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, the person who's muted everyone. Thank you so much. So can you repeat the last part? Oh, uh, okay. So what if it's an initiative by the government, for example, and then it's involving farmers in a certain region, for example? Um, could the statement I had earlier on talked about uh, be valid as a problem statement? Yeah, it could be valid. But then remember, at the end of the day, you're designing. So mm -hmm. the person who's using your design is farmers, not the government. Yeah. So farmers okay. should actually understand why they need to create the food security. Of course, you so can just say yes. So okay. at the end of the no. day, yes, I, I hope you get it. <laughs> yeah, I okay. Ah, uh, nice. So we have one last person, Ali, you can go ahead. Uh, okay, so to go to what the bank customer said, um, as a freight forwarder, I need to track my cargo easily because I need them to reach the client safely and on time. Yeah, that's that's a good one. So what do you, at the end of the day, you want your cargo, your products to reach your customers safely. So what do you need to do? You need to track your products. That's, that's, that's good. Okay, I think uh, that's every one. And then uh, the next one we'll go into is uh, goal statements. Goal statements now build up on the product statement, on the, I mean, on the problem statement. So goals, uh, goal statements do four things. First, they describe a specific action a user can check, like, or what exactly the product will do. So, if a user comes to your product, what are they doing? What what action are they taking in their product? So let me take the last example. If uh, a freight order comes to your platform, what exactly are they doing? So probably the thing is they come in and they want to just track their product. So the specific action they're doing is tracking the product. And then the next thing is you define who will the action affect. So who are the people that will be affected by the action you're saying? And then the third thing is what impact will it have? So what impact will the action taken earlier have to the user or to just solve the user needs? So you mentioned they need to track the products so that they can the products can reach the customer safely. So probably it will uh, help them now solve the safety issue. And then lastly, you outline the different success metrics. So if it's successful, how do you know it's successful? Mm, let me give an example of now like the framework you use when you're creating the goal statement. So you say our product will let users perform this and this which will affect, so our product will have the, let me call it the cargo tracker. So our cargo tracker will let, let users um, track cargo, which will affect uh, how the cargo, um, I don't know how to say it, which will affect how the cargo reaches the, which will affect, no, it will affect because it's not, it doesn't affect in any way how the cargo will reach because it's already shipped, but it will affect now uh, the security of the cargo reaching the user. And then by how will it now positively affect them? So by ensuring the cargo is safely delivered. And then lastly, how will we measure the effectiveness? So you'll measure the effectiveness by, for example, Mm, how many cargoes have been delivered safely, something of that sort. So that's an example of a goal statement. So let me show you another example that I had come up with earlier. 
So probably you do you're donating you you're doing an app that is donating clothes and stuff to people. So your goal you, the problem is um, people probably have extra clothes and they want to dispose them. So you're meeting the need by giving them a place to dispose their clothes. So our donations app will let users donate secondhand clothes, which will affect how users dispose clothes by giving them a platform to give back to those in need which will so how will we measure the effectiveness of it so it will be measured by the number of donations successfully delivered i hope you've you've gotten you've understood this concept so probably i can just repeat so the goal statement tracks what action so what actions will users take when they visit the app so our, don our app, the donations app, will now, so what action will the users do? They'll donate secondhand plots. So, and then who will the action affect? So how will it, so it will affect how users dispose plots, and then how will it now affect the users? The positive impact of I'm I'm going back and forth so that you can be able to like link it up. So how will it positive how will it affect now how the users interact with it? So by positively giving them a platform where they can be able to dispose of their second hand clothes. And then how do you measure the success? Success will be measured by the number of donations successfully delivered. Okay. So maybe I can give it over to you to try it out. So probably if you had a goal before or you just created a goal in your head, a scenario. So probably, no, no, I mean, if you had a problem statement before or you have like a problem statement already in your head. So what will now be your goal statement? So I've, I've done two, I've given you a uh, one that I had thought of earlier and then I've also given you one that did, that um, relates to Ali's uh, goal. So anyone else with any example using this framework? Mm, no one, is it that no one has understood? or uh, no one has any example. Uh, hi. Can you come again? Uh, I've, I've not had, I've had like two people speaking over each other. Uh, Collins? Oh, yes. So uh, I think my problem statement was uh, relating to a trainer who wants to conduct uh, virtual training for clients who are very far away. So they yeah. need a platform where they can uh, interact with the clients uh, such that it will be cheaper for him to do the virtual training than doing the physical training. So uh, a goal statement would be our, our, our virtual um, training app will uh, let users be able to come in on, onto the app and listen to the training material shared by the, the trainer which will affect how they inter, they get the information easily by letting them see the information virtually. Uh, then this uh, will be measure, uh, we will measure the product effectiveness by um, maybe asking questions from the people who attended the virtual training so, so that we can understand whether or not they got the information that was shared through the train. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Yeah, that's that's incredible. So you've been able to figure out, OK, you had the problem of uh, training people virtually and then how do you come in and make it a call? OK, uh, anyone else? Millicent? I don't know why people like raise their hands and then <laughs> they put it down. Uh, Millicent, do you have anything to add on it? OK. I think he's gone. And then there's Pamias. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name okay. Pa Paminas. Yes, Paminas. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. How do you pronounce your name? 
Paminas, as you said. Okay, go ahead. Using the example I had stated earlier about the bank application, and say a mobile bank app will let users check their check their what check their balance easily, which will affect their productivity by giving them a chance to do what to easily plan their finances. We'll measure the product effectiveness by the time it takes and how how secure. Uh, let me use how how long it takes to, to check the balance. Ah, okay. So you say you your case was uh, using the bank application to create a budget, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You've mentioned your application will let users uh use the data to create budgets so which will affect them by how will it affect them and then by what it will affect their productivity it will increase the productivity by it's a tough one uh, i'm lost i'm lost uh, <laughs> okay. Let's try another example. So, <laughs> let me let me use the example. So our budget app will let users uh, create budgets directly from the bank accounts, which will help them mm -hmm. know where the which will help them save their money by probably once I don't know how to put it, but probably once they like are able to budget, they can be able to see where the money is going and see where in case they need like to save, in case they need to invest. So it will help them build. So our our budget app will let users create budgets directly from the bank statements, which will affect users by creating better financial, which will affect them by helping users create better financial habits by, yeah. I'm also like a bit lost here. <laughs> So, <laughs> it, so it will affect them, uh, they'll create better financial habits by regularly being able to know where the money is going. So and then you'll measure the effectiveness by now how how much they save or probably how fast the platform is and of course the security. Yeah, and then I think we have one last hand. That's okay, Paminas. Okay, so we'll go with the last person, uh, Flo. Oh, hi. So I'm going to give a different example. Let's say we want our users to, to find car services depending on the location that they're at. So I think I'll say our app will make users find car services, which will affect how quickly they find them by let's say turning on the location and we will measure mm -hmm. the product effectiveness by, I'm really doubt, doubting my answer, but I'll say by how many people download our app on Google Play Store. So you want people to, is it for them to check out to service their cars, right? Yes, yes. So why do people need to, probably check how to service their cards. So you can say uh, for like faster service or ensure their car is always in good condition or something of that sort, right? So yeah. our car service app will let users track. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to use the word track because we used it as a, <laughs> to track how goods are moving. So yeah. probably it will let users locate Mm -hmm. different car service, uh, let's say mechanics or car service options, which will positively affect them by ensuring they get faster service, which will, so what will it do? So it will help them yeah, get faster service. And then, oh, that, that's the buy. So how will, that, how will it affect them? How will it affect them? 
can you say regardless of the location because yes. location is also a factor regardless yeah. of the location we can easily find the service, the service. yeah that's that's okay and then measure the effectiveness uh, effectiveness probably by uh, calculating how fast people the services are done or if they do rating so how good the ratings are on the apps or so on okay um i think that that will be it for now i still have a couple of slides to go uh, so in case like you have any question you can just drop them on the chat so the next part of this is storyboarding. So I know I know everyone knows how this line goes. So if I just tell you once upon a time, you already know I'll probably continue with in a faraway land or there was a princess or something of that sort. You had all the stories and probably most of them end, end with happy ever after. And I guarantee if uh, I am I'm a fan of uh, animation and I guarantee most of the people in this call, especially now the ladies, you have an idea of how Snow White started and how it ended and then how Cinderella started and how it ended. And then probably for the guys or for, I don't know what your movie tests are, probably you know how, how the different Spider-Man movies start and end, how the different Marvel stick series start and end. I don't want to like judge based on like your preferences or your views based on your gender, but you get the gist. So I believe most of these stories, you remember how they flow from beginning to end and you can tell people, okay, uh, this is, this is um, the Cinderella story and this, this is what will be there. So probably there'll be this, uh, lady she'll be called Cinderella and then her two evil stepsisters and these two evil stepsisters didn't like her so much and her dad died so it's only her step her stepmother there and she won't help she favors her daughter more than her so mm -hmm. of course she won't help her and then you also there's, there's all these things that goes in there's a ball and then at the end and in this ball Cinderella is transformed into someone majestic and stuff so that's that's like a story that probably you had in your childhood and it has stuck with you. So that's that's the essence of stories. Stories are memorable and relatable. So as designers, we sometimes tell stories through things like storyboarding, telling people, okay, this is what is happening here, and this is what, and you build up on it. So to just capture your audience attention and to create the flow in the application because if you're creating like uh, a web application, they need to know where the flow starts and where it ends. The relatability comes in when now you want your users to be able to identify with your application. So for example, if you want to, if you're creating a mobile uh, application for a red hair or something of that sort, you you'll tell stories you'll tell them probably uh, you want to go to school it's your first time um, in high school you you have all these uh things you have to carry you have to carry your suitcase you have to carry what else do you, do you carry from one so your uniform things of that sort your mattress but you can't you don't have a car in your house and you can't do all you can't carry all the things using a matatu because there's not enough space, especially if like it's opening day and there's so many of you going to school. So probably you'll need to hire a taxi to take you to school. So start with that and then build up with now what the story is and so on. So in a story, there are different components. There's the user, of course. So in the first story that I mentioned, Cinderella, the users are, of course, um, you can see Cinderella, step sisters, the stepmother, the prince, and then the godmother, the godmother. So those are now the different characters. So that is in the story, but in design, our characters will now be the users. So our user will be probably the parent and the kid who are going to school from one for the first time, and they have to take the kid to school and they don't have a car at home, so they have to hire a taxi. And then the setting, the setting is now 
where the story is at. So probably in Cinderella, it's in a magical land that never exists. And then mm, the form one story, it's someone who's coming from home, going to school. So that's where the story is set. And then the plot is now, what solutions are there in the journey? So with Cinderella, probably the solution is um, Cinderella gets transformed in, by the fairy godmother into a very, very beautiful lady and captures the prince's eye. In our story, our product probably will be the taxi. So the taxi is now how the student will, how the student will navigate to school. And then the last component of the story is the narrative. So the narrative is now the journey this person takes. So the kid is very depressed at the beginning. No, not the kid. Of course, the kid does not care. But the parent is very depressed because he's, he's wondering, OK, how do I take my kid to school with all this luggage? I don't want to overburden the kid. And then they discover, oh, this Uber, oh, this Bolt, or I don't know, little cab, Wasili, whichever, whichever ride shares you use. And then they are now, oh, wow, that's challenge overcome. So that's basically what the different components of a story is. And that's basically what storyboarding is. Storyboarding is um, telling the story of how the user gets intrigued with the app and how the user journeys through the application. So with the storyboarding, there are two types. There's a close up and then there's a big picture. Big picture is what I'm, to, I'm talking about. This kid and the parent, they're going to school. They don't have a means of transport. They're sad, so that's the big picture. And then the close up is now when you're looking at the application. So probably they decided let's take Uber. So you're looking at the Uber application looking how okay this is how it how it works this is how the user will use it that's the closer part so the big picture is generally the whole story and then the close-up is inside the big picture showing you how the user interacts with the application mm, i'm seeing there's so many chat messages let me see uh the storyboarding also connected with creating a persona Yes, yes, I believe so, because um, the persona is the user. So your main character is basically the persona. So like I said, probably the, the child will not be concerned about the ride because they're still a child. They may not even, it may not even pass their mind that probably we need a car to transport all these things to school. But then the parent might be the user because the parent is wondering, okay, how can we transport the kid with all these goods to school, with all this um, luggage to school? So yeah, the persona shapes uh, the story. Uh, okay, so I wanted to do a small demo to show you how storyboarding is. So there's an application, it's called Storyboard, not, not an application, a, a web app. It's called storyboard storyboardthat.com. It's at storyboardthat.com and it helps you create the different stories. Unfortunately, it has like a limit of two stories per application, but of course, I'll, I'll just show you how it works. So, um, this is, um, I, I'm hoping you can be able to see my screen. Uh, I have no idea why. It's a bit cut off. Okay, let me just go with it the way it is. So this is how it is, uh, storyboard, storyboard that .com. You can create one without even signing in, but I had to sign in to like uh, save my storyboard. So I can go ahead and create a new one. And then please wait. And yeah, so, okay. Yeah, let me continue that. Oh, it's two storyboards per week um so you have like the settings so probably they are at home so we can set the setting at home uh which is the right place this is the bedroom um yes let's let's put this with bin bags here and then so we have the characters so our character 
is the mother. Christian Gozis as the mother. So let's let's make her sit down on the bin bag. So she's seated. Mm. I don't know how he can turn her. <laughs> uh, hair is okay, head is okay. So let's put her head that way. And then hands are okay. So probably she's sad. So hands across the chest and then she's a bit sad. Uh, seated. Uh, see. Okay. And then we update the pose. So the mother is seated there. She's a bit sad. She does not know how the, the kid will uh, carry, carry luggage to school. And then we have the kid. So since the kid is going to like form one, he's probably a teenager. So and then we also edit. So he's happy, so he doesn't even know what's going on. He's happy he's going back to school. Uh, let's give him a pair of specs. And then, uh, yeah, let's twist him that way. And then he's seated. So did pause. And then this is how the kid looks like. Mm. The kid looks bigger than the mom. <laughs> so let's, yeah, let's put him like that. And then the kid is seated also on the bin bag. So the mother is like, okay, how do I carry all the things? So we are supposed to have luggage there. So probably school staff. So he has a bag, uh, this bag. So we can put the bag there. What else do kids carry to school? Um, Probably some books. So the books were too. There are some books that were too too much to be like put inside the bag. So you can have the books there. The books there. I, I hope you're all following. And in case like you have any question, <laughs> you can just tell me. And then what else? So the snacks. Uh, uh, food. There's a bit of snacks here. Mm. Snacks were illegal in our school, so I don't know. Uh, so we can have like some of the snacks here. So probably some peanuts. And then, of course, peanut butter. And some, I think, tea or coffee or something of that sort, or cocoa. Is there a tin of no? So you can put soda. That's that's a good drink. So and then there is soda. Then what else? So probably clothes. So he probably needs clothes also. So some pair of shorts. I, I hope you're getting the, the picture. So well, let me put also like a pair of pants here. And then some some shirts. Uh, yep, some a shirt here. So I can change the color. And then there we go. What else? Uh, any other school item I missed? Uh, no. Oh, no. Um, anything else? Probably furniture. No, this is, oh yeah, mattress. That's it. So we can add a mattress there. So mattresses are huge. So let's put it in, in between them. Okay. So that's now you can see our story is, is growing. We are adding some things. And then the last thing we add is now the mother thinking. So probably she's having thoughts. Uh, how am I? 
way to carry on this score. And then reduce the size a bit. And voila, that's like our first frame of the story. So when someone comes here, they can see, probably you can add a bit more things here to show it's, it's more than just um, what, what, it's more than just the small items, but I think you get the picture. So you can just say, this this guy is uh um so for him we can we can put a happy bubble so for him it will be yay um I, I think everyone is always happy when they go to school on the first day day one in uh, at high school is finally here and that's it. So because it's like a new adventure, so they're happy and stuff. And then it's not like you you have no idea what's laying ahead of you. So you're very happy and joyous. So yeah. So you can like if someone comes in and reads this frame, they can already tell mm, what's happening. So uh, day one at, at high school. And then, so this is like now the first frame. And then uh, I don't want to put so much time on this because I think once I've done the first frame, you already have an idea of what it is. So this is now like, uh, depending on now your artistic, your artistic style and the story, this can be like your first frame and you can put more art in there. If you like want to show, okay, this is, um, I can put some shapes up here and show so something on the, at the top here. Uh, it? So it's for it to become something like a comic book whereby uh, you, you write, okay, today is day one. So let's call him Brian at uh, uh, so depending on your artistic style and how how detailed you want it to be you can go ahead and do something as small as this for the first frame or add a few more ads or sprinkle something else and then go ahead tell the story more and more so your frame two might be Ah, I can use a taxi. And then from three is now when you show the tax, how the taxi app looks like. So you can see the various different shapes here that you can use, numbers, arrows, symbols. There's more and more things you can try out and use. So in case you want to like show the application, how it looks, a low fidelity pro prototype, you can probably draw it here and show like an a low, I'll explain more about low fidelity as you go ahead. So you can just explain in a low, in a very simple way how the app looks and how it functions. So from one might be, okay, this is the problem, voila, the answer, hey, this is how the app works, and then go on, continue sharing the story of how the app works and so on and so forth. Okay, so I don't have a question here, but probably the only thing I'll ask is, is everyone understood what storyboarding is? And um, can I give you all homework to like work on a storyboard for your problem statements? Uh, I can see some thumbs up. Mm, okay, so you can go to that site and try, try it yourself. Try and see if you can create something as uh, boring as mine or something more interesting. If you like comics, this is actually a very good place to start. So yeah, that's that's it about storyboarding. I hope you've understood uh, the different context. So oh, wow. So understanding what the big picture is, and then understanding now how exactly you bring you bring up the close-up. So the big picture is just showing uh, this boy and the mom 
they're going to school and they're that that wondering how do we carry all the things and then continue and go on and so forth. Uh, are there any other storyboarding tools? Uh, I have, I can't say I, yes, because I'm not sure, but I believe you can also create stories with like Figma or yes, with Figma, I can say yes, you can create a story, but it's a bit harder because uh, all these uh, styles are not yet preloaded, but I prefer this. It's simple, you have everything there. And probably if you know any other storyboarding tool, you can just paste it on the chat. But then let's go to the next thing. So the next thing is information architecture. This will be a bit of theory from my end. So information architecture is now when you create a diagram showing how the user goes through your application, showing all the different pages you have, and then how the user gets to that page and how they, how they continue and so on. So for example, uh, how, how do you define like the routes the user takes? So this is an example of the Duke University Library. This is how it's info in information architecture looks like. So this is a library, as you can see. And uh, this is when you enter, this is now home. And at home, you can find probably search and find. So if you want to search for a book, this is your place. And then using the library. So using the library, what, what might be there? So probably borrowing books, renewing, requesting, uh, probably um, documenting like, is, did you receive the book? And then probably choosing whether it's an ebook or not or something of that sort. So this is all under using the library. And then I believe if, uh, in, I think also like locally in some schools, uh, there are some libraries which have rooms you can reserve. So something like that, if you want to like uh, do, a, do a, a focus session alone in the library, probably you can reserve a room or if you want to like do a group discussion, you can reserve a room and do your group discussion in the library. And then the other part, important part of the library is now the research and support part. So research and support is whereby you go ahead and look for different articles and probably um, research papers written by different people. Also finding out how do you go about under copyright, how do you publish your work and so on. So that's research and support and so on. So the other things like course support about us, when does the library work and so on. So these are like the different things you'll find in the homepage of uh, Duke Library, Duke University Library. On the website you'll find all these things and here you'll find all these things. So this is what the information architecture is, all the content you need in, the, in one place. So a very, there are two tools I use here and one of the simplest tools when you're creating uh, information architecture is draw.io. So, or it will redirect you to diagrams app.diagrams.net. So you can just create a new diagram and you see here it's already like um, pre-done the diagrams for you. So for us, we're, we're not doing a flowchart, we're doing um, something like this, a UML in a way. So you can come here and uh, look at the different charts and figure out, is this the one I want to use? No, is this the one I want to use? No. So like the various, the different types of charts you can find here and you can just go through them. See, this is a Kanban board. You want a layout, so this is a different layout, so different parts. But then I think we'll go with uh, flowcharts and then choose something like, so most of them uh, show the flow. So we can choose something like this. And then instead of, we can remove the charts and instead of it, we just show like this is, uh, let's say the home, no, home will be here. And let's say we're doing the, we're doing the tracking application. So this is home. 
and let's say you want to create the track tracking application so probably you'll, you'll have like the tracking and then you want it to secure so hi i have a question yeah go ahead uh, don't these uh, shapes uh, don't they represent uh, something unique like we can't just slap any shape inside here like the rectangle and the rhombus oh so uh, i i'm just using this template i'm not like um, i'm not using it uh, for the user flow i'm using it for the application architecture and so we only like need rectangles so i'll just come and erase everything i'm using it because of the template so it's like easier to get started with does that make sense but yes, they all mean something. When you're creating a user flow, which is something probably you'll learn in the next few weeks if you have not yet learned about it. So the different shapes show like different things. So this is like um, the rectangles will show something like the application, the different like pages. So like home, the tracker and so on. And then this ones will show what action you're doing and then the arrows point to like where you're going so uh, at home so you probably sign up and then no sorry <laughs> when you're on the tracking page what you do you probably input like um, a value and then if it's accepted you go ahead and go to the next page so you've started with home added the tracking number here and then once you've added the tracking number, uh, give me a second. <laughs> uh, one second. Mm, sorry, my voice was becoming hoarse. And then once you add, so this will show you like the actions you're doing. And then this will show you like the different pages. Hope that's OK. So for us, we're just doing like um, an architecture, an information architecture. So we don't need all of this. I'm just using this as a template. Um, I hope that answers your question. So you just go ahead and. Uh, uh, yes, but. Uh, yeah. Yes, but, uh, but uh, so you can just do research on it uh, on our free time and maybe no more. Oh, yeah, on the user flow. Yeah, yeah. Please do. Uh, I'm not yeah, sure yes. it will be covered, but it's very important because it now. So the architecture just shows you what what are the contents of the application. So probably you tracking as as I showed you here for Duke. There's like the search how using the library. So it just shows you the different components of like this is what is found here. This is what is found here. So you will like go to about us. You'll find probably when the hours we are open, staff, and then the different jobs. So it just shows you this is what is found in different pages. Use, user flow will now like direct you. So this is now how the user navigates around the application. So this is just, uh, so you can go ahead and create something as simple as this. Uh, you can use a different uh, template to create this, but then once you're done, you'll be able to export your chart and you can be able to now share it with everyone. So probably, let, let me change this to home. Um, control Z. Home. Uh, yeah, home then. Uh, Second. Boom. Then let's see. Tracking. Then let's continue with the deliver. And then I don't know what else you'll need. Probably about us page. And then probably help and support. And then you show like what are the different components found here. So at home. So when you come to something like home, what's found there? 
sorry. <laughs> I'll come back and deal with this later. So like home, what do you find at home? So probably track, a tracker, a tracker or something like that. And then past deliveries or past tracking, so something of that sort. And then under track, you, you find probably the location details. And it can only have like that thing alone. So probably it will just be a map showing you the location and that will be it and then delivery probably it will also show you like the contact details of the person delivered contact details and things of that sort so that's that's it about the information architecture it's just you showing what 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 is what what does the app contain what does the different pages of the app contain so I'll, I'll go back to the information architecture and give you a few principles by this guy. He's called Dan Brown. He founded a company called, I think, eight. No, I, 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 don't, I don't remember the full name. I'm so sorry. But he founded a company that uh, was is under these eight principles. So in these principles, he talks about what what do you, what should you consider when now creating your information architecture, and of course, when you're creating your information architecture, this leads to now the content you're supposed to deliver. So, what exactly should you focus on around this? So there are eight principles, and um, I let me just cover everything, and then in case anything is not clear, you can just tell me. So the first one is exemplar principle, which means um, most of the time when users go into your app, they associate things with categories. For example, if I'm using something like, like PowerPoint, I the first thing that comes to mind is like um, insert, I associate it with, uh, that's where I'll be adding photos and so on and so forth. So the first, like if I want to add a photo, my mind will just go directly to insert. So that's how most users behave. And then there's a multiple classification. So most users have different ways to access information. Some will probably use the menu. Some will probably just want to go ahead and search for whatever they're looking for. Or like some of us, we just do control F and figure out this is the word I'm looking for in this whole website. So probably we just do control F, I can be able to find it. So having that in mind, like users use different approaches to find information. And then the other thing that also deals with navigation is a focused navigation principle. Uh, this means uh, that, of course, different applications have uh, different menus. So you should, and different pages may also have different menus. So you should also have that in mind when you uh, like going when someone is navigating through your application how do you change or adapt the menu to fit them so for example if you're checking your email so of course most of the emails the navigation is on your left and you can be able to see things like um on your left you can be able to see things like your inbox and so on but then on your right on your top top right you'll probably see your account details and settings so that's that's like what you associate your mind with so that's on focus navigation and then the last principle on this slide is growth so growth means mm, most of the time when you're creating an application probably for example if you're doing the tracker application you might probably find out that you only have mm, if you're doing the tracker navigation, you figure out that the only thing you're doing is just tracking. So in future, probably you may need to track more than just cargo. Probably you may need to track cargo on, uh, I don't know how, how it is. Oh yeah, cargo on motorcycles or cargo on something like tuk-tuks and cargo on something like lorries. So that's also something that might come in future. You might also need to, you might also like have 
like the deliveries, you, you might also be like delivering to a company, delivering to an individual. So having that in mind that design is ever growing, the, the platforms and the different tools are ever growing. So being able to accommodate future changes and having that scalability at the back of your mind. And then the last set of uh, principles, um, the objects principle is also the same as growth in a way, because growth talks about uh, your content might eventually grow in future, but then something like object talks about your growth is ever evolving, it's ever growing, it's it's like a living being. So it, the first time you create it might not be like the last time you touch it. And if you like join a company, you may not even be working on a design that was created like one year ago. It may be even five years old and you're just there for for that season that will be there. And probably someone else will still come in and also work on the same design. So it's design is living, it evolves, and of course sometimes it dies, but it's it's like a living thing. But you shouldn't like uh, take it like um very personal when someone criticizes your design because at the end of the day it's not you it's it's its own living self then the other thing is um choice the choice principle i likened it to higgs law so higgs law says um, it's based on an experiment that is um when users are presented with um, three different types of peanut butter they're able to identify, okay, this is the type of peanut butter I want. But then when they're presented with like uh, more than 20, they're like, okay, um, I have no idea what peanut butter I want. So they, <coughs> sorry, so they stand there trying to think around, okay, what peanut butter is it that I want? And at the end of the day, they're so confused, they end up not even buying from that brand, they look for another brand that has like two choices and pick the choice that's there in front of them. Uh, so, sorry again. Okay, and then the, the disclosure principle. So the disclosure principle is around, you users should actually be able to process what is it they're seeing on the screen but they should also be triggered to learn more about what it is on the screen. So that's about disclosure, disclosing enough for them to be able to understand what is there on the screen, but also less, no, no, not too much that they lose interest. So too much that they also want to go to the next page. So like if you're seeing the landing page of a startup and it's uh, showing you what the product does, probably they Put it in such a way that it triggers you to like okay i want to learn more about the product and then the last principle is the front door principle I, i'm sorry for the theory i know it's a bit boring but it's it, it will come in handy especially when you're like designing and you remember all these things at the back of your mind like front door is basically most users don't come into your website like uh directly, they don't just click uh, something like jquat.ac.ke and land themselves at the jquat website. They approach the websites differently. So they might probably see a blog of their friend and they click it, will read the blog and then probably, okay, this is interesting. They want to learn more about the school or something like medium. So most people will probably have never seen like the medium homepage and how it looks. Ah, I, I know the perfect example, Stack Overflow. I, I'm pretty sure if you, if you like look at stackoverflow.com right now, for half of us, it might be like the first time you're looking at it because it doesn't even like come to mind like, okay, I have to check the homepage. No, you're always like, I need to find the solution to this code or I need to find the solution to this problem. So like if you, if you, there are different like stack overflows nowadays. It's not just about code. I, I don't remember their names, but if you like want to like solve a problem in design, you also go to that stack overflow for design and figure it out. 
but rarely will you find yourself on the home page. So that's the front door principle. Not everyone will land in your home page. So you should ensure each page can be self-explanatory enough for them to find what they need and use it. And in case they want to learn more, they can learn more. But in case that's it for them, they can also get certified with the content on that side. Okay, so the main thing is actually supposed to talk about is the um, prototyping. So what is low fidelity? What is high fidelity? Uh, is there any question? Oh yeah, what's the dif are there any other storyboarding tools? Uh -huh. What's the difference between information architecture and the user journey map? I'm not sure if they answered this, but uh, information architecture contains the details of like what is the content of the application, what are the different pages, but the user journey map shows now how the user navigates through the different pages. So if you have any questions, just be sure to post them on the chat. Uh, so I'll go ahead and talk a bit about um, low versus high fidelity prototype. And at the end, if I don't, I don't want to, to go all the way to uh, the top of the hour, but if we get extra time at the end, we can do a bit of design. We can just take a look at how Figma looks and uh, just do like one page and that will be it. So what is low versus high fidelity pro prototype? Um, first, probably I'll just explain the word fidelity. Fidelity is now like how close does your design how close does your design match the original? So like, um, how close does you, what, what is like printed on your design match what is expected by the users? So, so a low fidelity will mean something that's very different from like what you'll see, but then a high fidelity means the, if you like put the design and put the final application, next to each other, you might not even tell the difference. So that's the difference between low and high fidelity. So there's the, the scale comes from, the low fidelity starts from like you using a paper. So for example, uh, you just drawing down an application on your notebook. So let me see if I can find my camera. So let me show you, an, let me just, uh, just uh, give a brief example of how it looks like. I don't know. Uh, I have to change my camera. Give me a second. Okay, so this is my notebook. I hope you can see it. And uh, let me just hold it there. Let me also remove blah, <laughs> uh, device settings, uh, background effects. Uh, okay, so this is this is uh, my notebook, and you can see I have like a pen here. And if if you like want to, you like want to do a low fidelity prototype, you can just go into your notebook. You, I I prefer like having a plain notebook and just like if it's an application, just go ahead and draw it down. So draw like a screen. Doesn't have to be perfect because this is you just uh, putting down your ideas and then probably what app are you making? We're doing the, um, the tracking application. So what, what what do you want to see in your home? So I also like come back here and write like home. This is what I expect to see. So probably, um, uh, what what might be there? Mm, so let me, let me think in terms of Cindy. So it's normally on Cindy's homepage. So once you sign in, probably there's like a, a search, uh, a, um, input bar that shows an input box to like um, add your tracking tracking uh, tracking number something of that sort and then probably some terms and conditions at the end down there terms and conditions and then once you 
once you like put in your details, it shows you details of what you've you've uh, done. So details like um, probably what what is in the luggage, what is in the cargo. So contents, cargo of the contents, the date it was sent out. So date and then date departure plus arrival. And then the last thing, don't look at my handwriting because <laughs> I, I was not the best person. I, I didn't have the best handwriting. I don't, still, I don't have it still. And then probably like the costs it, it checks. So I'll probably have like the logo here. So logo, company logo, and then the input field. So it can be just an input box here. And then on top here, I have uh, add tracking number. And then probably it's just a line here. Then show the details. So date, this is when it was de uh, delivered. Uh, no, date departure. And then down here, arrival. So this I can write tentative next to it. And then things like... Uh, Contents. So if like I have a picture, I can show a picture here. And then down here I have like bullet points. So this is what is there, this is what is there, this is what is there. Then the last one, this is what is there. And then the last thing I said was the cost. So I can say right down here, total, and then something like, uh, uh, $25. So that's the total cost for transport. And that's it. You've drawn your low fidelity. So you've just come in with your idea and drawn a rough sketch. So with time, if you, like you, you're an artist, it gets better. But uh, this does not matter because it's mainly like you're putting your ideas on paper. So that's... Uh, a low fidelity and it gives you an idea of what like you want to create and then once you, you're done with uh, creating so this is on the screen is also like an example of something i did before and then once you're done you can also like have your low fidelity a bit higher so for the low fidelity on paper it's mainly for you trying to think to think through like what you're creating does this make sense? Does this look appealing? So you can have like an eraser next to you, just erasing things and figuring it out. And then if you now want, you can showcase your paper, if like your paper is good, you can showcase it and ask like your teammates or so on to like see if it's a good idea, if that's what they had in mind or your client. And then you can also go ahead and do like a, low fidelity on you can do low fidelity on like uh, the different applications you have so this is balsamic it's it's a bit expensive but it's it does the work very useful so balsamic you can uh, create it has all like the how can i say it it has all like the elements you, you might need so for example, for us, it was an Android. So we had like uh, on top there, we had like the logo. So something of that sort. And then I write logo. And then from the logo, what else did we have? We had an input, so text input. You can put text input down here. And then, so this this actually allows me to uh, like write the I forgot the name <laughs> so add a tracking number here to add the um, I don't know who remember the name of this thing I have no recollection what it's called and then you can add it there so add tracking number and then down here what did we have so we had now like the different items so we had something that had the items so like the date, uh, departure date, all 
variable date, and then we had uh, the short, no, so we can just do departure and arrival. Uh, cool. And that will be it. So once like the, you add your tracking number, give you the departure, arrival, and then the content. So the content is like an image. So let me look for an asset that shows an image. Let me go back to all. So an image is mainly depicted by this. So this is like, like a contents. So this will be now the contents. And then by the side, you have it. So, ooh, contents there. And then have like, um, I also want, I want, uh, let me go back to the list again. I just put it there. I'm okay with it the way it is. So I put it there, like the items. Item one, item two, item three. Mm. Um, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so whenever, so personally on my side, whenever I'm, I'm doing low fidelity, I usually tend not to kind of like write the text part, like what, what you've done, like um, um, depth that, arrival that. So what I usually do is kind of like, put a line, like um, a placeholder, just to avoid, um, you know, at that stage, it's kind of like... Um, um, you want to do it fast, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and not, not actually doing fast, but I kind of tend to see that if you put the text um, early, you kind of like don't have that um, mentality of kind of like changing the content. So personally, and I'll have to get your feedback on this. So personally, I usually like, put if there's a section that has text i just put like lines whereby i will put the details later on when i'm working on the high fidelity um design um what, what's, what's what's the feedback on that on that because i usually tend to say that if i do it on the low fidelity i won't do any change um when i'm working on the final um final part um uh, so for me i normally like do once, once like I do something of this sort, I normally do like um, several low fidelity. So depending, I, I wouldn't say, I, I know everyone has like a different like style of doing this. So for me, I normally prefer having everything down, having like writing everything there and ensuring you can be able to see what exactly it is that I am doing. So that for like easy presentation, in case like you're presenting to your team members and stuff, they can be able to tell, okay, this is like the idea you had and everything. But then for low fidelity, you don't have to add any text. You can just go ahead and write lines. You can go ahead because low fidelity is meant to help you ideate faster. Oh, yes, a placeholder. Thank you. So low fidelity has helped you, helps you to ideate faster and to be able to like share your designs. People can actually like uh, see what you're designing very fast. So I, I, I like balsamic because um, it, it has everything. Like you don't have to, even if I left this text like with, um, like the way I've written this item one, item two, item three, you don't have to, you can just leave it like that. And probably when you're explaining, people will have an idea of what you're doing. So I've had uh, Envision is, I hope I've answered your question, Joseph, have I? Yes, yes, yeah, you have. Okay, so there's someone saying with, uh, uh, with low fidelity, oh yeah, balsamic is charged uh, monthly. It's very expensive. <laughs> so the alternatives, of course, there's Envision. It's very good. I've, I've never like gotten, it, it's free for students. I have like the free version, but I've never understood how it works. But then there's also, I think, uh, draw.io, you can still do like the low fidelity designs because it also has the same features. Let me go back to it, I show you. 
So if I do again, uh, draw Rayo and uh, leave, and then I create a new diagram. And this time I create wireframes. You see it already has some existing wireframes that you can use as templates. So you can either delete them or just retain them the way they are, or create one for yourself from scratch. So this is also a very nice tool to use. And then what else? Uh, can one use a low fidelity to create a full application? So the idea of low fidelity is to help you, as I said, help you ideate faster and help you help you like show people what you're thinking. So of course you can't do um, you can't you can't like create a high fidelity immediately. Sometimes you need to go through like revisions. You need to also see if your users actually understand what you're building and also like the business. You need to like take care of the business side. So you, you, you and also if you like have teammates, you also need them to go through your application and see whether it makes sense or not. Uh, some uh, Ali has mentioned Adobe XD. I used Adobe XD when I was starting out. It's expensive <laughs> and uh, it, it used to crash. I used to have like a, an old HP laptop, <laughs> so it will crash every day. <laughs> so I didn't have like a good experience with it, but Adobe XD is quite good. Like it has very, very uh, niche features. Oh, it's free. Ah, nice. So yeah, you can, you can, you can get it for free. Uh, so, but it has very nice features by the way. So if you can also do tools. That, let me let me just say this. Tools just help you like uh, generate your ideas. Like you've seen, I've drawn something using just a pen and a paper. So tools just help you with uh, getting out your ideas, showing the world, okay, this is what exactly I'm thinking about. And like, can you be able to do this and this? Yeah, and then so the difference between low and high fidelity. This is technically not a low fidelity. OK, I, I think I've done like this is the third level of low fidelity. So even on Figma, if you like want to get started on Figma, probably it won't have like the images and stuff and it won't be like very. This is a bit high level. It's also close to high fidelity. So you can also do the same. So high fidelity, uh, low and high fidelity. And then I think this is the last image I wanted to share, showing now a full fledged application. Um, so probably I can do a bit of Figma. I can just show you how it looks like for those who are new. I think this is the, so I think Michael will now go through Figma in depth and he'll have like a, an application he'll be building. So for Figma, this is how it looks like. Uh, let me go back home. This is how it looks like. So there's Figma, there's a design file, and then there's a FigJam file. So FigJam is mainly for ideation. So in case you want to come up with an, an idea and you want to collaborate with your friends. So the templates like, uh, they're very nice templates here, baby. So the templates, let me, let me go specifically to the research and design templates. So for those asking about uh, user flow, so there's, a, there's someone who mentioned about a persona, the empathy map, and then, uh, wait, why can't I see the user flow? User flow, yeah, user journey map. So there's the user journey map. You can go and see how it looks like. It's like the template is already there. If you want to use it for your project, feel free. And then there are different templates, use case, uh, customer journey map. And then there's also like brainstorming templates. So if you want to brainstorm with your friends, this is like a brainstorming template you can use. There are also like different methods of brainstorming. If, if you're interested, you can also go and, and check it out. Like what, what the hell is crazy AIDS? I, I don't even remember what it is, but you should like go check it out and see. And then I saw there's also like uh, wireframes templates. So where did I see it? Well, this is a game actually, Connect4. <laughs> so if you want to play with your teammates. <laughs> if, 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 you, if you've played Connect4 in real life, 
this can be something similar. So if you're if you're with your team and you you want to play around, uh, like during your lunch time or something, and you're online, you can't meet with them. Just go and play Connect Four and Fig Jam. And then uh, there's one last. Uh, where did I see it? Let me just search for it. Wireframe. Yeah. So there's also like wireframes you can use here. So if you want, you can. If 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 you like, you feel like those different um, applications are too much. You can have everything on Figma and go ahead with it. So Figma, I, I don't think I mentioned how to access it. So you can access it on on the web, Figma.com, and then just sign up. Uh, I'm using the free version because uh, they normally just work alone and if I'm working with friends, just a few friends. So when you go to figman.com, you just sign up. You can sign up using your personal or school email and you can just get started. So I'm using the desktop version. So if I go ahead and create a new design file, this is what I'll see. Very blank page with nothing on it. And then the first thing I'll, I'll, I like doing is creating a frame. So frames are like the background of what you're, not the background, like the what's holding your application. Is, is it a phone? Is it a tablet? Is it desktop? Are you creating a watch application? So on. So probably we do an Android or an iPhone. Let's see. Let's do an Android. Hmm, that's too huge. Uh, let me do a small. Let me just do a small Android. And then, so this is how the Android background will look. This is now the first uh, frame. And then now if you want to add context, content, you add it to the, uh, you add it to the, to the frame. So for instance, our, the first thing we had there was the header, uh, the header or the, the logo part. So this is where I like, for the word logo, so I can just come back here and do the same. So write logo. So that's the first thing. And then from there, what else was there in our prototype? Uh, so a text box to add tracking number. So either text box or something with a placeholder. So I want it to stand out. So I'll do a text box with a placeholder inside. Uh, I'm a bit rusty. It's, it's been a while since I did this. And then you can have it to have sharp edges or you can give it um, a curve of the corners. So just a small curve of the corners. And then probably you don't want it to have fill. If, if, you're, if you're hearing uh, new things, Oh, wait, uh, give me a second. Let me just read through the chat. XD is free. We're just designing, but you have to pay for it. You want to share your designs. OK, Figma, you don't, you don't pay when you're sharing. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not plugging Figma, <laughs> but just, just by the way, uh, check pirate sites for cracked Adobe. No, we don't do pirated products. If we can't pay, we go for the free versions. Mm, at your own will. Uh, had had we talk about Figma. Hey, I'm seeing people are plugging here pirates. People here are pirates. Pirates of the sea. No, sea pirates. No. What, what, what are they? Pirates of land. Pirates of of Nairobi and, and I don't know where. I'm seeing pirates. Please, if you're a pirate, we have the ocean. You can go to Mombasa, but please, not digital products. People paid with their blood and sweat for them. Anyway, let me stop exaggerating. But yeah, we shouldn't pirate products. <laughs> so, like, if, if 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 you feel like XD is expensive, there are free versions. There's Figma. So Figma, Figma is good. It's a bit lightweight. It's it's good for our small PCs. So yeah, and then, so this is uh, uh, I was doing what the text box. And then, so the fill is now the color that fills in the fill is the one that this 
gray color. Oh, Miro is free for like two, three projects. So I, I don't want it to have any fill, so I can just close the eye or uh, just remove the fill, but then I can add the stroke. So stroke is now the border color. So once you add the stroke, I change the color to a bit, no, let me just pretend it to be black and white first. So, no, that's too dull. Back to black, black, black. And then the next thing you do is add a bit of text. So I'll come in and add some bit of text and say, add you, oh, cut block, add your tracking number here. And then so the users will know this is where you put your tracking numbers. So that will be like screen one and then screen two. Once the user puts the tracking number, so tracking number is uh, if any. Let me just misspell my name like that. And then probably uh, it will search for a bit. And then after the search, it will give you the different details. So the first thing is um, a text showing like the dates. So date, uh, departure, date, something like uh, 25th uh, May, May 2022, and then arrival, Control C, V, uh, arrival date. This is a very simple design that I'm doing. So just introducing you to how to navigate Figma and stuff. And then the next thing is I said we are adding an image. So probably <laughs> just realize I need, I need the image to be big enough to fill this whole place. You also want to maintain consistency, so I'll still do a radius of four here. And then you see that the guides on Figma, they show you like when they're on the same length. So probably. And then I add content here, so I want to add an image. So there are different ways you can add an image. So the first one is by um, coming to shapes, place an image or control shift K, place an image from your PC. I don't know what images are there in my PC, so I'm not risking it. But then you can go to plugins and then add, add plugins. So when I go back to my home page, uh, you can see there's Bethany here and then there's a community. So in my own space, I'm called Bethany, but in the community, I'm called Pikachu. So as Pikachu in the community, I need a plugin, so I look for something. So for images, you can use something like Pexels or Unsplash, yes. and then I exclusively want a plugin. So you can see I've already installed the Pexels plugin. So I'll come back, uh, go back to my plugins and look for Pexels, and then add an image. So I'll wait for it to load and then what contents must be there? So let's see. Uh, the content is uh, food. One heads food. So probably this is the content. Uh, some pizza. And oh, what? No, cancel. Oh, this is the. Oh yeah, they're too close. So you can see the content is pizza. So I can increase the image so that someone can be able to tell exactly what the content is or decrease or something of that sort. And then the last thing we need to add is, um, what was the last thing? We need to add what is in the content and then lastly, do the total. I've realized I need to add what's in the content. So I'll probably have to downscale it a bit and then control C, control V, and then just write, okay. 
in caps lock, in world contents, uh, cargo content, and then probably now do again control C, control V, then do a list. So list you just just uh, you just use um, what is it called the hyphen key and then just enter and write and probably like pizza, pepperoni, or I like Hawaiian, so Hawaiian, and then probably some toppings and probably some soda. What else? What else comes with pizza? I don't know. I think that's it. So people can see, okay, this is the content of the cargo. And then we can do no, let's let's leave it that big. And then probably send it down here. And then the last thing we can add is now like the cost. So I add another text box uh, and write co total costs. And uh, total cost will I be have about... a question. Yeah, go ahead. So yeah, is, yeah. is this uh, so this is Luffy Dabito? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm building it up. So this is very low fidelity, just uh, writing the content. Okay. And then from there, you can now like now add the colors, add exactly. So I've already, I've, I've done like a duplicate of what's here. So basically I've not even added color stuff. I've only added the image. So the other thing is now, how do you now, ensure you you have hierarchy so something like people must be able to see the costs so increasing like the size of your cost so 15 doesn't do like a lot of difference so putting it at 20 and then having it colored or something of that sort so having it at red and then so total costs you can be able to see it and then so i think i'll, I'll leave you guys to play around with it so i don't i don't want to finish the design because I feel like I wouldn't leave you guys with any homework if I finish. So probably you can go and figure out. So you can look for inspiration from like other designs. So how do you make this? Uh, how do you make it better to be replicated in an application? Wait, uh, Simeon, did you have any other question? Yeah, so... Um... When, so basically, when you add colors, yeah, it's when it becomes high fidelity. Or how how will this one now? So high fidelity. This one from a high fidelity. High fidelity is not just about adding colors. It's about making it look exactly like what you want to implement. So let let's take an example. So we've just done. Uh, I've just shown you around Figma. So let me, I, I normally, uh, oh, I don't know, my, my PC is acting up a bit. So I normally like uh, look for inspiration on Dribble, but it's not a good idea because the UX is a bit funny. But let's say I wanted to search for a delivery application. A delivery application. And you see, so this is how like the high fidelity looks like. So once once you've now figured out, okay, I have all the things I need. So how do I make it a bit more functional to the user? How does the user know this is where they are inputting? Like how do they know that this is where they are inputting their inputting their their tracking number? So you can add something like a search. So I'll also go to plugins. I look for iconify iconify is a plugin for icons and then probably add a search icon here so search and then mm, just a simple search icon mm, i reduce the size so it's too big so i put it at about um, 24 and then you can see so there's, there's a bit of a difference and then probably adding something like some bit of animations. 
So I'll use something like LoT and add, I've probably not signed in, so it won't even, oh, yeah, I've signed in. So I look for something like uh, an animation. So what animation can I add here? So something like uh, tracking number, what does it remind you of? Uh, search, still, so search. And then, so I can just add a LoT file here. So I'll add this. But then the problem with LoT files is um, uh, oh, yeah. So I can add it as a GIF or add it as an animation. So when I'm adding it as a GIF, I just like add it there. And it's a bit a bit of more color in in like the in the what is it called in in your design. So like oh sorry. Uh, so like um, having a high fidelity means creating something very similar to now what will be there in the market. So I, I, I'm, I'm not supposed to go in depth. That's what I'm avoiding. I don't want to like go in depth because tomorrow, on Friday you're supposed to cover more on now like the different things on Figma, how you exploring Figma a bit better. So I don't want to like uh, preempt what, what will be on that lesson. So like, but just adding a few a few things here colors changing probably you also have to think about like the font this is like the generic font i think i'm using enter so probably i i, I can use something else so probably something like poppins and then you have to ask yourself why am i using poppins instead of enter or something of that sort so and then also playing around with the layout so with the layouts you can add something called a grid and then with the grid, so depending on how you, I, I prefer having my grids a bit bigger. So, and then my grids are normally on the ratio of like four, so four, eight, 16, not, not ratio, factors of four. So like is your, is your design on the, on the right grid, are you like consistent? And then things like that. And then also using things like auto layout to ensure that you, when you when you move something from your design, it does not entirely uh, affect everything else. Okay, I think if I continue speaking, I'll, I'll finish this design, and that's not what I want. So as a homework, you can go ahead and figure out. Okay, with this cargo application, how else can you make it a bit better? How can you improve it? And then on in Friday's lesson, you learn more on now how to convert low fidelity to high fidelity and stuff. Yeah, uh, any question? Uh, wow, people here are like pirates. The silicon savanna is full of pirates. But anyway, we will, we will learn in future. We will be good people. Uh, any question before like I close? Uh, Winnie, do you have any anything that I might have forgotten? Anything that I might not have had have added? Nope. Uh, I think for me you're okay. Uh -huh. there's a hand up. Uh Mukeli. Hi, Bethany, correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks like a it looks like a medium fidelity wireframe. Yeah, yeah, it's medium because it's it's not high because this is not exactly what you're going to implement, but it's also not low because I've already shown you like I don't know I don't know how to put it on a scale. So low is um from like pepper fidel pepper prototypes to like your uh, balsamic uh, examples or whimsical or whichever applications you use and then uh, medium to high starts from now Figma and stuff but then Figma also has like the low fidelity just creating things without even adding any text and stuff 
So yeah, this is not very low, but also it's not like uh, the highest level we can reach. Yeah. Any, Mukeli, any comments? Are you good? I'm good. Yes, Joseph. Hi, Bethany. So um, this is just a comment. I think today's session was very, very, very informat informative, especially on the principles um, of, of information architecture. I think that's um, a section supposed to kind of go and uh, do a really huge homework on it. And um, I really thank you um, for that. Um, the second thing, I think um, the design community is huge. And um, as I can see from the uh, chat section, I think people have good ideas. And um, just a quick suggestion, I think people can really be quite interactive with the Slack group. So if maybe people could kind of be active on the Slack group, not just waiting for meetings. If people could just share ideas on this um, on the Slack group, I think that also would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joseph. Um, there's one last hand up. We have like five minutes left. Becca? Um, hi, Bethany. I think this is a question to Winnie. Um, I heard Bethany talk about uh, on Friday. So is the class on Friday or on Thursday? Mm -hmm. Because on the group you had on the group you had mentioned Thursday. I think I'm the one wrong here. Okay. <laughs> it's on Thursday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Follow what's in the group. That let me just tell you, follow what's in the group. I I I, I might not be a hundred percent sure. And then I think this will be the last question, the last person. Uh Kisyangani, Johari. Uh, hello. <clears throat> I I have a question. Uh, I've noticed uh, the difference between today's presentation and the and the previous ones. Uh today you are more focused on the UI and um, uh, designing all the law and the law fidelity. So uh, I, I wanted to know in UX design, is there um, a speciality where somebody can just uh, be doing uh, like the UI designing stuff uh, without having to do things like research and all that? Um, and I I also uh, would like to know when when can we access to when can we have access to the to this recording uh, i might have missed some important uh, information or i would just like to revisit this uh, today's session okay for uh I've, i'm actually i've actually forgotten <laughs> uh so for the for the second part for the recordings so that will be with Winnie Mandela and then for whether you'll be doing UI only or UI and UX um so when you're doing UI design you actually have to you have to like tell people why exactly you're doing this so in industry they might be like uh, different divisions of the roles so you might you might find yourself you're just doing UX or you're just doing UI only, or you're doing both. But then the main thing is being able to answer the question why. So maybe I can give it to Gloria's to like um, she's she's like been in the industry longer than I, and for me I just do both <laughs> UI and UX. So uh, Gloria's maybe you can give an insight on that. Actually, I wanted to comment on the bit about the videos, and you've already stated that. Um, about whether you can concentrate on UI and learn and not do UX, I'll tell you this. UI cannot exist without UX. That is based on my, my experience. As much as you'd want to simply push pixels and um, concentrate on that, you still need context. 
And a good designer is one who has context on why he's doing what he's doing, and that's where UX come in play. So in a big company, yes, you can only push the pixels, but it helps when you have context on what you're doing. Even at Twigger right now, we have a product designer who not necessarily doesn't need to do user interviews. He doesn't need to have to be on stakeholder meetings. All he needs to do is to translate the the the, the features that you request him to. And at that point, it means he has to go through a bunch of documentation that UX has put together, or he has to be on the calls just to listen in, not really to give any input, but just to listen to get context because it helps and it also there's someone who said you 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 take ninety to eighty percent of your time thinking about your solution on and the problem you're solving for, and one percent of the time implementing. So most of the time, our PD listens in on calls, doesn't give feedback. He can just join a user interview call where, uh, or if it's a live, uh, if it's online, they just join and listen in. They don't need to to say anything. But they do that because it helps them also when when they're now translating uh, the features being requested into the the end result. So yeah, I hope that answers you. About the videos, just keep on checking the MSP. Um, there's there's actually a playlist that Mandela shared with us. So it has a list of all the sessions, and we will definitely have this live by Monday, so you can check that out check that out as well. I hope that answers you. Back to you, Bethany. I don't know if you had anything I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had everything. I I think it's answered everything. So I think the last questions are for Winnie. So will there be a UX writing session? And then also, do they get certificates after the training? So Mandela, you can go ahead and answer the last questions as you close. Pardon, do you mind repeating the question? Oh, the first one is, will there be a UX training, UX writing session, at a session on UX writing? Uh, okay, so uh, Evans Ochuka, uh, we actually have a curriculum, but we can't share it with the participants. But yes, that will be the session about next week. So for each week has a theme. So this week was more about low fidelity yeah, and wireframing. So next week, you guys will be handling more about the UX research part. Yeah. And then are we going to be satisfied after the training? Ha! Ah, let me not answer that for now, since we still have to take people to phase two. So after we have taken people to phase two, that's when I'll be at a comfortable position in answering that. Yes. I hope I answered the case well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming back to you. No, you're supposed to close. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. It's been fun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. It's already, it's already 10 p.m., so people need to sleep or, like, look for food. So, yeah, <laughs> I hope you guys have, like, a good rest of your night. And please, design is more of practice rather than... Uh, well, there's a slide I was to share on... Uh, the last slide I was to share was on ethics. So in design, ethics is as important as you doing the designs. I'll just share it as a quote or something in, in future. But then design is more about doing than, uh, than listening. So you go out there, it, it, it takes time to be good at it. And if you do it every day, you'll become better and better. So yeah, that's it. Over to you, Winnie, and then you can just close for us. Okay, so before I answer Millicent's question, uh, I think you can view from the chat and just share what you learned from the session. Just go to Mentimeter or the link that I have shared on the chat and just tell us what you, what you take away. Yeah, and then uh, so can they clarify on the assignments that I did by Friday? So last weekend on Saturday, uh, you guys were given an assignment to pick a product and redesign it and also state why you are redesigning it. 
So the problem statement is the one that you're supposed to submit by tomorrow, by Thursday, which is tomorrow. And then the designs are the ones which you are supposed to submit by Friday. So for those people who will have successfully submitted the assignments and the assignments will be reviewed, the ones who are going to have passed that stage are the ones who will be going with them to phase two. I hope I answered it clearly.